Number 46. A swimmer bounces straight up from a diving board and falls feet first into a pool. She starts with a velocity of 4.00 meters per second, and her takeoff point is 1.8 meters above the pool. Letter A, how long are her feet in the air? So in terms of how long, what they're asking us for is a time. All right, so how long in terms of seconds uh, are her feet in the air? All right, so we're looking for time. So let me just write that over here. So we're looking for time. And as you can see, I drew the picture already. So here's uh, the swimmer. I, I'd say he looks like Michael Phelps, but that's just me. Um, so there's a swimmer. His height above the diving board is 1.80 meters. And he is leaving the diving board at a velocity straight up of uh, 4.00 meters per second. So we want to know how long is uh, are his feet in the air. So if we had to frame out the problem, we would want to be thinking about, well, what is the initial point of the problem and what would be the final point? Well, his feet are in the air this whole path, right? So that being known, this would represent the initial point, and then this would represent now my final point. Okay, so if this is my initial point over here and this is my final point, let's label some things that we know and some things that we don't know. So we do know uh, the velocity at the initial point, right? We do know that that velocity is 4.00 meters per second. So let's write that down, 4.00 meters per second. We also know um, uh, the displacement, correct? Now the displacement is the difference, right? If you remember the change in displacement, I'll call it y here, uh, since we're dealing with a uh, y problem essentially, right? It's a vertical uh, problem, it's a free fall problem. So remember, change in displacement is simply the uh, final value, right, minus the initial value. So the displacement of the final value minus the displacement of the initial value. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the difference between this point and this point in terms of the height. And that was actually given to me already, right? That was given to me in the form of 1.80 meters. Now the thing is, if he's starting high and ends low, that number will be negative. If he were to start low and end high, that number is positive. So I do know that this value right here should be now negative 1.80 meters. Great. I don't know the final velocity. The final velocity would be the point here at which he hits the water. I don't know what that is yet. And uh, what's another variable? The Also the acceleration, right? We have to remember that that is in the y-axis, and therefore, since this is a free fall problem, it should be negative 9.80 meters per second squared. Now let's think. Given the facts that we know, we know the initial velocity in the y direction, right? We know the displacement in the y, we know the acceleration in the y, and now we're looking for time. Do we know a formula on the right-hand side that relates those variables? And we do, right? The upper right-hand side equation number two fits the bill. So let's actually write that down. So the change in the displacement, I'm just going to, instead of using x, I'm going to call it y, is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction multiplied by time plus one half of the acceleration in that y direction times time squared. So this should be now negative 1.80 is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction, which was positive 4.00. Why is it positive? Because it's pointing upwards in the positive y direction, times time plus one half, negative 9.80 times time squared. Great, so let's just clean this up a little bit, right? We get negative uh, 1.80 is equal to 4.00t, then this would now be minus 4.90t squared. And I already start to begin to realize I'm probably gonna have a quadratic here, right? I got a squared term, I have a non-squared term or raised to the first power, and then I have a constant over here. So realizing that, what I wanna do is I wanna try to put this into a form uh, where I set the equation equal to zero. So what I will do here is I will add uh, this term on over to the left, all right? And I'm also going to then subtract this term on over to the left as well. All right, so what that will give me now, that'll give me a positive 4.90t squared minus 4.00t, then minus 1.80, now that equals zero. The reason why I do this is so that I can find my coefficients, right? If I know this is in the quadratic form, this is my a value. This right here, including the negative, is my b value. And now that's my c value. So what we would look to do is, if you don't have a program on your calculator, you're gonna have to go about it the old fashioned way, that, well, it's x equals, right, but my variable here is t, so we'll call it t is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So you just plug in your b, 
your A and your C, and you're all done. You just plug it in, and then you get two answers, right? One, you'd have to add the two terms in the numerator, and the other one, you, you would have to subtract the two terms. Instead, what I'm going to do is I have a program on the calculator. I'm just going to plug in the A, B, and C value. I have a TI-84, and if you wanted to know how to do that, then maybe we'll put out a video in a little bit, or you can just search it online. It's pretty easy, but it's very handy. So the A value is 4.90, the B value is negative 4, and the C value is negative 1.8. So you're going to get two answers because it's a quadratic. Uh, well, not all quadratics, by the way, have two answers, but usually these will give you two answers. So I get T is equal to 1.14 seconds, and then I also get T is equal to negative 0 0.3 about. Just always disregard the negative times. I'm starting time at 0. So if my, I'm assuming right at the clock starts as soon as the jumper, not jumper, as soon as the swimmer jumps. So that being the case, I can always get rid of the negative time because it won't make any sense. So I have a time value. So this is how long uh, his feet uh, will be in the air. So that takes care of letter A. All right, so now let's take a look maybe at letter uh, B. So now it says, B, what is her height? I guess it can't be Michael Phelps then, right, if it's her. So <laughs> what is her height, um, highest point above the board? So basically now what they're asking us is if in terms of my picture, right, they want me to find the difference. Uh, how? Hold on, what is her highest point above the board? So that's the important term, above the board. It's relative. So what they want me to do here is they want me to find the height difference between this point and if I were to dot a straight line down, this point, okay? That's important to note that because this will tell you what your initial and final condition should be. For example, I can say that this is my initial set of conditions and this would now be my final set. No longer is my final uh, when the uh, swimmer hits the water, okay? So now let me just backtrack here, make it nice and neat. So right here now, this is going to be my new final value, okay? So let's see if we can write down some knowns and unknowns about that new frame. So again, the initial velocity in the y direction, it's still the same, right? It's 4.00 meters per second. That hasn't changed. The acceleration, since this is a freefall problem, that's still the same. It's 9.80 meters per second squared. Right? The um, displacement in the y direction is what I'm trying to find. I don't know what that is. That's what we're looking for. Uh, the time, I also don't know the time here, right? That's equal to zero, uh, not equal to zero. That's equal to some value, but I don't know what it is. And what about the final velocity in the y direction? So remember, this point in your picture is really important. That's the point at which the object stops going up and just begins to come back down. What does that mean? That means for a split second, the velocity is zero, specifically in the y direction. So I actually know this piece of information is zero meters per second. Now what I'm going to do, I know I want to find my displacement. I know the initial velocity. I know acceleration. And I know final velocity. So now pick one of the four, five formulas on the upper right-hand side. Looks like we're going to go with number two. So let's plug that in. So we got final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. And instead of the displacement, I'll just put as y, okay? So the final velocity is zero. The initial velocity was 4.00, and that's squared, plus two times the acceleration, negative 9.80, times now my y. Great, so this is zero is equal to 16, right? Minus now 19, minus 19.6y. Add the 19.6y to the other side, so then we get 19.6y positive now is equal to 16. Simply now divide out the 19.6. And now y will equal, let me give myself a little more space. So y will equal 16 over 19.6. And the y value now comes out to be, and it's positive, which it should be. Why? Because remember, you're starting low and ending high. Okay. All right, so 0. 816, 816, and that is in terms of meters. So wonderful. Part B is done. Now let's move on to part C. What is her velocity when her, heat fit the, when her feet hit the water? So remember, what's the frame? Where's the initial? Where's the final? So the initial I'm still going to consider um, at the beginning of the problem. All right. And the final velocity I'm going to now talk about when she hits the water. All right. So those two red circles represent my frames. So now let me write C on over here. Let's list what we know. 
The initial velocity is going to be the same, 4.00 meters per second. The acceleration is still the same because it's a free fall problem, so negative 9.80 meters per second squared. What else we got? We're looking for the final velocity, so that's our unknown. We do know the time because we just calculated that before over here, right? So that, and it was in the same frame, so that means it should be the same time. So 1.14 seconds. And I also know the displacement, right? The displacement um, was the same as in part A. It should be negative 1.80 meters. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to find final velocity. I know the initial. I know the acceleration. And what I'm actually going to do, I could choose either one with time or one with the displacement in it. I'm going to choose one with displacement because that's what was given. I'd rather not use one with time if I can help it because I don't want, in, in case I made an error here, I don't want it to propagate now into my... Uh, third part of the problem, all right? Because then I get two wrong instead of just one. So let's now look for one of those equations. So it looks like uh, it looks like equation four here is going to fit the bill. All right, so let's do that. So we get final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. So we got the final velocity squared, which is what we're looking for. The initial velocity is 4.00, that's squared, plus 2 times my acceleration of negative 9.80, multiplied by the displacement. I just have to put it down here slightly because I'm running out of room. Negative 1.80. So now we get the final velocity squared. It should be equal to. So let's just do the math there. So 4 squared is 16, and then 16 will now be added to 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 1.8. And we get a value of 51, right? Uh, 51.3 when we take it all into account. So 51, hold on one second, 51, oop, make the five a little neater. And that was less neat. There we go, 51.5, excuse me, 0.3. And again, to, fi to find just the final velocity, I gotta get rid of the square. So therefore, now I'm gonna take the square root of both sides. So now the final velocity here, uh, when she uh, hits the water, so take the square root. Now we get 7.16, but remember, anytime you take a square root, you get both the positive and the negative answer, okay? So it's going to be positive, negative, 7 7.16, that's meters per second. But what should the answer be? Should it be positive or negative? Focus on her direction. What direction is her velocity moving in? Is it moving up or is it moving down? If it's moving down, that means it's in the negative y direction, and that means the velocity should be negative, all right? So let's just go back, let's just erase these two signs now, and let me put in the right one of negative. So that would be the final velocity, negative 7.16 meters per second. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe. Until next time.